私助ける本当におせっかいなこにゃん。Okay, not agreeing with you more, girl. You and Lala officially tie as my favorites of this team. We open this week with a recap of Blue Cat's transformation to Cure Cosmo. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm still not impressed by this sequence. I don't know, it just feels like it lacks direction with too many close-ups, making it feel a bit disjointed and not quite match up with the melody in my opinion. Though, it might match up better if they had used a different song sung by Blue Cat's VA. Seriously, look up the music video to this thing, it's trippy as all hell. Also, I await the day we get a series that alters its OP right after the Six Rangers debut, because it's just awkward still seeing these two treated as separate characters. Anyway, the actual episode opened with my theory about them saving up the animation staff's energy for this week being proven correct. The animation director of this episode was Nishiki Itaoka, best known for doing the key animation for several Precure movies, and a bunch of episodes of Princess, which, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. As a result, even Blue Cat's literal cat punches had a lot of power behind them. However, just as it looked like they would be able to call it an early day, the big bad of the series decided to intervene now of all times. Really dude? Of all the vessels you could choose to make your big debut in, you go with I-1? I'd sooner go with one of your moot gimps, at least save yourself some dignity. On top of powering up by one, Darkness's possession of her also seemed to have the ability to further corrupt her thoughts, making her Valley Girl mind surprisingly even more toxic than it already was. Oh goody, we all know where this is going. Though thankfully, before we got there, we were treated to a fantastic Itoka-style battle sequence with three of the Precure unleashing some awesome chain attacks. Sure, it didn't affect the Nultrates who had been buffed by their boss, but still nice stuff. And while not as well animated as her friends, Hikaru still had a good fight with Kapard, mostly thanks to the latter's expositing. He correctly pointed out that much of what's going on right now was at least partially Hikaru's fault by failing to attain the Ares pen in the first place. Uh, yeah, this guy brings up some good points. Uh, Hikaru, do you have a rebuttal? Well said, main protagonist. Okay, to be fair, she was more focused on helping I-1 than having a moral debate with Kapard. Thus, after a quick mega punch, she finally retrieved her pen as even the best villain in the show forgot to put it away. Do villains these days just not have pockets? But yeah, after grounding I-1 with an impressive double axe kick, Darkness raised the forcefully power up your subordinate defeat flag. Yeah, you know, that cliche where the big bad gives their lackey a deadly upgrade, in this case, sealing off I One's thoughts, making her a mindless killing machine. It both gives the protagonist a motivation to pull out a new power up of their own, and make the villain sympathetic, which, yeah, I'm not a fan of the setup. Even though she doesn't fully reform by the end of this episode, it's obvious they're building up a big face turn for I One, which, as of the time of this recording, I'm not completely sold on just yet. I know I've said in previous reviews that she is kind of growing on me, but the more I think about it, the more I realize it's more me pitying her than actually connecting with her. This episode in particular really tries to woobify her, but that's not really expanding her character at all. She's still the same amoral valley girl scientist, but now she's angry that her close confidant betrayed her. To me, she still hasn't really broken free of her stereotype and feels kind of generic as a result. Compare this against Kapard, who I unironically think is the best villain in this show. Because on top of just having loads of charisma, he's already gone beyond his Chunibyo stereotype. He's shown genuine anger due to Hikaru's carefree nature and has hinted at a darker backstory. As a result, it makes it seem like his pretentious diatribes might actually be coping mechanisms. I'm actually interested in learning more about Kapard. I want on the other hand, I'm not really interested in learning more about her, especially when most of her stick up until this point has just been her being an unrepented jerk. Now of course, my opinion of her might change on down the line, but just going by this episode, mm, I have serious doubts. Anyway, I will say at least she does become a good vehicle for selling Darkness as an unrepentant heel, and a good opposition for Hikaru to overcome as she pointed out the hypocrisy of Kapard and the other generals for blindly following this guy, in spite of all that talk about suffering in complete darkness. 
Now they were serving a guy whose big plan was to basically shut down all brain functions across the universe. However, after a good old pre-cure deadlift scene, Blue Cat got her new weapon, which, honestly, I think I preferred the old design, but I guess it wasn't quite toyetic enough. It means an object or device that could easily become a mass-produced toy. So after a final attack ride that was apparently stronger than a normal star pen attack, because we gotta sell them toys, I-1 was returned to normal, but as I said, wasn't ready to reform just yet, and even committed Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Hey, you're full for leaving the keys in the ignition, girl. They went through the usual Star Princess revival ritual, but this time they took Blue Cat with them to ask if the pants could save her planet. That doesn't answer my question. Thankfully, the Tauros Princess gave a slightly more straightforward answer, though she still stuck a might work into her sentence. Before leaving the planet, Blue Cat took the Precure to see her queen, who had apparently given birth to all of her people. I'm thinking through asexual reproduction, so basically she's like the Xenomorph Queen, I guess. Sure, Ikara, let's go with that. The less we have to talk about the birds of the beast with you, the better. Still, even though she had clearly never seen one of the best sci-fi films ever, Hikaru wasn't going to let Blue Cat pull the Six Ranger Lono trope and talked her into coming with them. I have no idea why she wanted to remain a loner, especially when she doesn't have a blind ship. Meanwhile, at the Notoraders HQ, oh hey Tenjo, you're still in this show. The, anyway, Darkness finally took on a physical form of... Serpenter? Okay, this guy could overtake Kapard as the best villain if he just does this. <laughs> also, nice touch throwing in the Darth Vader breathing noise for this kind of robotic final boss. Though interestingly enough, I-1 was nowhere in attendance during this scene, obviously more hints towards her inevitable face turn. Back with the Precure, after revealing that her transformation perfume only works on cat people, Blue Cat broke bread, or donuts in this case, with her new teammates, and also revealed that her real name was Yuni. So after giving me another reason to love this character, the episode ended with the Precure returning to Earth in broad daylight. I'm pretty sure Mr. Kaguya should be able to get a good picture of you guys. Also, in spite of not changing the OP, apparently the animators had the second ending ready, which, yeah, it's a lot better than the first. The grid backgrounds are awesome and kind of remind me of a combination of Tron and some Forza music videos. Though, what's the deal with Hikaru's eyebrows here? No need to get angry. Calm down. I am calm. As an introduction to the abilities of the new Six Ranger and the big battle of this series, this actually did a really good job with some great animation to boot. I just think I could have gone without the obvious face turn they're building towards. First of all, major praise to the talents of Nishiki Itooka. Her specialty seems to be protracted sequences with rotating angles and seamless motion. This makes her the go-to animator for fancier transformation sequences and of course dynamic fight scenes. While not my personal favorite, that title still goes to Kodai Watanabe for how imaginative he can get. I will admit, Itooka is much cleaner and precise with how her characters move. Every movement transitions beautifully into the next with no cuts or cheap tricks ever used. This all worked really well in this episode, especially considering they were trying to sell us on this new furry cure. We already got most of the interesting parts of Blue Cat's backstory in the last episode. This week was all about showing off her cool fighting style and ability to combo with other cures. As for her finisher, I thought it was... Okay, this wink is cute, but I'm willing to bet the only difference between each of the pen attacks is this symbol. So, yeah, pretty much standard for the show at this point. On the villain side of things though, things are a little more mixed. Kapart had some great moments in this episode, like rightfully calling out Hikaru's blunders, and just being an outright good villain, aside from having some butterfingers. Dark Nest, hard name to pronounce aside, certainly made a good first impression between his terrifying goal of completely shutting down all thought across the universe to his awesome design which after a quick bit of research on Google may also be Zodiac theme but let's not spoil that just yet. Gotta say, I love how he basically has LEDs for a face. All that said though, do we really need to have I-1 of all characters start to pull a face turn? Even if it was an accident, she still essentially caused the near genocide of a whole race of people and hasn't even repented for it yet. But it's clear that they want us to feel sympathy for this character, which 
okay, but maybe we should actually develop her character rather than just having her suffer all the time as though we're not supposed to interpret all of this as karma. Again, maybe they'll change my mind on down the line if at the very least she drops the Valley Girl accent, but otherwise, that's ultimately a minor complaint for what's one of the main visual showcases of this series. How was you guys' week, by the way? Me, personally? I've been busy helping move some furniture into my sister's new place, and have also kind of gotten addicted to my record. Now that I have my first model car, I'm going to hoard my gems until I can get the ultimate. I've also been working on my DDPC review, and hopefully it should be out soon in spite of those aforementioned distractions I've had all week. Look forward to it, and until then though, for now my friends, and... What's that music? Wait. I talked about the opening to Pop Team Epic, didn't I?